Oh, I, I, I can't shut up. I already said you guys got, got to stop me. I recently met Marina Abramovic and she says that the more screwed up your parents, the better artist you are. And I'm happy to report that my parents were very screwed up. Uh, there were uh, people who were um, panicked about loneliness. There were people who were interested in a good party. There were people who were interested in, um, uh, in interaction and relationships, uh, abandonment, the typical sort of uh, Mexican soap opera. Actually, my grandfather was a chemist, was a failed chemist. He uh, was a German immigrant in Mexico, and in his garage he would be an inventor. And I was very attracted by his reactions and experiments. My grandfather invented plastic, but he invented it 60 years after it was already invented. So it was uh, a sequence of, uh, of events that, that I was very um, romanticizing. And my parents were more interested in nightclubs and transvestites and salsa. Um, so I decided to go into chemistry. I thought it was um, um, a field where you could have a, a, a sense of control, a sense of reaction, of experimentation. But the truth is that uh, chemistry is very uh, creative only if you study a lot more than just a degree. I only have a degree in chemistry, but it's only if you're a doctorate and then a postdoc then you work at a lab, you can be creative. Otherwise, it's just very mechanical and it's analytical. I was more interested in the, in the crazy part of science because science is a very intensely um, eccentric field. Duchamp said, le regard fait le tableau. And I'm excited by this because ultimately, in my work, the idea is that, um, again, it's not Teleological is not ontological, it's something that's more dialogical. It is in the moment where people are interacting that the piece is created. Um, I'm very excited, for instance, by people like Sol Witt. Uh, I'm interested in the idea of art of instructions. You have these instructions that compound what then can become an architectural experience and a body experience and a perception, but ultimately it's constructed out of these relatively simple instructions. In the same way that when you're working with code, when you're doing software, you're setting up those instructions to then be realized. So the artists that I like are, um, I'm very interested in Buckminster Fuller, for instance. Uh, I'm interested in the possibility of creating uh, environments um, that involve your perception and that they're done with an economy of means. Um, I'm fascinated by the Mexican Estridentista movement. So um, in Mexico we had a very kind of futurist or almost Dadaist uh, movement of poets mostly who were using radio technologies uh, in the 1920s to do manifestos for, uh, for antennas. Um, and so this intersection of uh, architecture, performance, sound is, uh, is where I feel comfortable. When all of these different media mix. Um, I, have a, a, I have a studio in Montreal and, uh, and it's, it's a studio with 10 people. They are um, mostly engineers, some are architects, some are artists, but um, we work uh, in the studio in two ways. One is backwards, uh, we call it parasitically, so sometimes we are giving a commission, for instance, to do uh, public artwork in a square, and then we study the constraints and we develop something for that. And other times we work bottom-up, so we're working with materials, we're working with forms, we're working with formulas, and then something, we don't know what, will come out of that. And we do about 50-50 of, of that, but it's usually in collaboration with specialists in their fields. I started 20 years ago and for about 12 years I was only working in public space in the tradition of Johann Gertz, uh, I was very interested in Christo, I was interested in large-scale installation and I in fact was very um, critical of the art market and specifically about the idea of 
necrophilia and vampirism that is associated with the art market. Then I started getting art galleries and I sold out. So now my work is found in museums and is found in collections. But I'm not completely cynical about this. For me, what is important is to say, yes, my artwork can be owned and it is owned by collections. But what I'm interested is in changing this idea of preservation to perpetration. The idea that instead of conserving a cultural act, you perform it, you re-perform it, you reconstruct it. And in my works, when you get one of my pieces, you also get a set of instructions on how to migrate that project into the future technologies, giving the future curators a lot of instructions on how to do that. And leeway too, because we don't know if what we're doing is going to be sustainable later. It's actually quite easy and, uh, and it's quite welcome. Um, there are a lot of collectors who have my works. I have um, a lot of attention placed on, on this idea of perpetration. So for example, collectors who buy my work get the work. They also get all of the software and the source code uh, for them to represent it. So, MoMA and Tate right now own my work and what they've done is they have an experiment where a theoretical experiment they have killed me and my lead engineers and with the documentation that we got them they've given this to independent engineers to reconstruct the project from our instructions and they've both succeeded MoMA and Tate so it's very nice because not only with new media is the project not age? It actually gets better over time because you get, you know, sort of access to say higher resolution, or you get a number of different aspects of the project. So it's 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 not a problem to to collect. I have a, one more thing. I know I have to be short, but it's just a, a if we take photography. If I buy a Gursky and I am a museum and I've spent a lot of money. My understanding is that you are asked to provide two copies. One is an exhibition copy and one goes to a fridge with this controlled for preservation. In my work, that would be absolutely ridiculous and wrong because my images are digital images and what I do is when you buy one of my wallpapers, I give you the CD with the color profiles, with the original artwork in it, with color samples on how to reprint the picture in the future. So the idea is you as a collector buy this work and you have everything to reprint it. You put it on the wall and when your child comes and scratches it or when you move houses or when you put a mirror on top of it, you don't worry because you can reprint it. Um, the problem with this in the market, of course, is that then they say, well, how do I protect my investment? How do I ensure that people are not going to mass produce it? And that's where my certificates come in. I've made this beautiful aluminum lingots, which are encoded three times digitally. They're engraved, they're signed. And this is what you put in your safe. But the image wants to be free. You should be able to reproduce it as often as you want. If you want to put your entire house with these wallpaper images, you should. Um, so I think that there is a, a new way of understanding value and understanding um, what is collectible. So I have a Mexican passport because this is where I was born. That one's green. I have a Canadian passport because I married a Canadian and that's blue. And I have a Spanish passport um, because my mother was Spanish. So that's red. So I have RGB.